In this surgical technique video, we will describe the adjunctive use of spring plate in open reduction and internal fixation of posterior acetabular wall fractures. Me or my colleagues have nothing relevant to disclose and there were no potential conflict of interest. No external financial aid was received for conducting this study. Open reduction and internal fixation is indicated in displaced posterior wall fractures with an unstable hip joint and also in fractures with marginal impaction and presence of retained intraarticular fracture fragments. As an alternative, non-operative treatment can be considered in stable hips and in extremely elderly patients with multiple comorbidities. In fractures presenting late and in elderly patients with severe osteoporosis and marginal impaction, primary arthroplasty can also be considered. The preoperative plan in this patient is to use a cocker langenbeck approach in prone position. The fracture will be reduced anatomically and stabilized with a lax screw and a spring plate, further augmented by a 3.5 mm buttress plate. Prone positioning allows easy knee flexion to relax the sciatic nerve and also allows good access to fluoroscopy. However, it is difficult to perform a trochanteric flip osteotomy in prone position if required. Spring plates are small malleable implants that has claws at one end. A custom made spring plate can be made from a 130 tubular plate. These implants are extremely useful in comminuted fractures with small fracture fragments and it has been shown to enhance the strength of fixation. The pre-reduction x-ray and the CT scan shows the dislocated right femoral head with a large comminuted posterior acetabular wall fragment. The hip was urgently reduced in the OR within 6 hours of injury. Post-reduction CT scan shows the size of the posterior wall fragment and as you can observe there are no retained intraarticular fragments or marginal impaction. For this surgical procedure you require the 3.5 mm plating system, power tools with the universal chuck and quick coupling, the ball spike pusher and multiple K wires in various thickness. During the course of the surgical procedure, we will also use the blunt sciatic retractors to safely retract the sciatic nerve and expose the retroacetabular surface. Other reduction clamps can also be needed as required to achieve a satisfactory fracture reduction. The operative site is marked and a formal timeout is then performed. The patient is positioned prone with the hip extended to relax the sciatic nerve. A curved incision is made starting 10 cm distal to the greater trochanter, curving posteriorly at the tip of the trochanter towards the posterior superior iliac spine. The skin and subcutaneous tissues are incised and full thickness flaps are raised exposing the underlying gluteus maximus muscle and the iliotibial band. The iliotibial band and the gluteus maximus muscle are split along the line of the muscle fibers. The iliotibial band is split sharply whereas the gluteus maximus muscle can either be bluntly dissected or can be split by using an electrocautery. The gluteus maximus muscle is split in such a manner that you have a posterior two-third muscle belly supplied by the inferior gluteal artery and an anterior one-third of the muscle portion which is supplied by the superior gluteal artery. The split muscle bellies are then retracted to expose the layer of fat pad over like the short external rotators. Gently teasing this layer of fat will lead you to the sciatic nerve and will expose the short external rotators of the hip joint. The sciatic nerve lies posterior to the gamma lie and the internal obturator muscle and anterior to the piriformis muscle between the greater trochanter and the ischial tuberosity. The nerve is found extensively contused in this case due to the injury. As you can observe the nerve is relaxed as the hip is extended and the knee flexed. But once the positions are reversed you can observe the nerve getting stretched out and it is important to keep the knee flexed and hip extended throughout the surgical procedure to prevent inadvertent injury to the sciatic nerve.
the sciatic nerve is isolated and protected by using two wire loops. It is extremely important to make sure that no traction is placed on the nerve. Once the nerve is safely isolated and protected, the short external rotator muscles can be tagged with sutures before elevating them from the posterior capsule. The quadratus muscle should be left untouched throughout the surgical procedure so as not to interfere with the blood supply to the femoral head. The short external rotators are then incised 1.5 to 2 cm proximal to their insertion, once again not to interfere with the blood supply to the femoral head. A blunt sciatic nerve retractor is now used under the short external rotators to retract the sciatic nerve and expose the retroacetabular surface. It is again important to use these blunt retractors only for brief periods to minimize iatrogenic injury to the sciatic nerve. The fractured posterior wall acetabular fragment can now be well appreciated. The fracture surface is cleared of debris and clots and any presence of marginal impaction should be looked for at this point. Presence of retained articular fragments will require the head to be subluxated or dislocated. Once you have confirmed there is no marginal impaction or retained articular fragments, a K-wire is drilled into the fracture fragment to use as joystick for manipulation and fracture reduction. Once reduction is confirmed, the fragment is pinned in place with a couple of K-wires, making sure they do not violate the joint. The K-wire joystick is then removed. Provisional fracture reduction is checked and the hip joint is taken through a range of motion to make sure the joint is free and there is no inward vertent joint penetration. The posterior wall requires rigid fixation considering the amount of forces transmitted across in the early part of rehabilitation. It has been shown that use of a spring plate in addition to a reconstruction plate significantly increases load to failure. A 3 volt convex pre-bent spring plate is used in this patient. The plate is positioned over the posterior wall and fixed using a single 3.5 mm cortex screw into the posterior column. When tightened, fracture compression is achieved by the works and additional spring plates, if required, can also be used according to fracture morphology. One should make sure the medial hooks of the spring plate do not project beyond the posterior wall fragment, which can then cause injury to the femoral head or the acetabular labrum. The K wire is now removed and is then replaced by a 3.5 mm cortex screw placed by the conventional lag screw technique. The pilot hole is drilled by using a 3.5 mm drill bit followed by drilling of the thread hole using a 2.7 mm drill bit. The screw track is measured and then tapped. An appropriate length 3.5 mm cortex screw is used as a lag screw to compress the posterior wall fragment. Further stability is provided by using a 3.5 mm 6 volt pelvic reconstruction plate that is contoured appropriately. One should make sure to seat the plate properly over the fractured posterior wall to generate adequate compression and buttressing effect. Additional screws through the posterior wall can be placed through the plate. However, one should be careful to avoid intraarticular penetration when placing screws in the vicinity of the joint. A distal screw into the ischial tuberosity significantly improves the stability of the construct by virtue of its long length and excellent bone quality in this area. 
you should be careful to protect the sciatic nerve during insertion of the screw remaining screws are placed on either side of the fracture as required to complete fixation intraoperative jude views are taken to confirm fracture reduction joint congruency and screw positions prone positioning allows excellent access to fluoroscopy compared to lateral positioning once fracture reduction and fixation are confirmed to be satisfactory the posterior soft tissues can be closed the wound is lavaged and the sciatic nerve is checked for any sort of impingement the previously tagged gamma lie and internal obturator muscles are now repaired back with sutures The superior gamellus muscle was found ruptured in this patient due to the injury and was repaired back. A closed suction drain is used and the gluteus maximus muscle and the iliotibial band are repaired with running sutures followed by closure of the subcutaneous tissue and skin. Post surgery patients were allowed to do hip movements from day 1. Initially patients were kept on a restricted weight bearing protocol progressing to full weight bearing by 12 weeks thromboembolic prophylaxis with injectable low molecular weight heparin or oral agents were used for a period of 3 weeks post operative pelvis ap and jude views demonstrate excellent articular reduction at 6 weeks similar fracture patterns treated with the same technique showing excellent radiological and clinical outcome at long term follow up The described surgical technique was used in 27 patients who were assessed at a mean follow-up of 6.8 years. Patients with isolated posterior wall fractures with an unstable hip joint reduced within 6 hours of injury were included in the study. Radiological outcome assessed as per Marta's criteria showed excellent outcome in more than 70% patients. Anatomic reduction in the initial post-operative radiograph was obtained in 25 out of 27 patients. and there were no significant loss of reduction in follow up clinical scoring showed excellent to very good outcomes in more than 80% of the patients and degenerative arthritis was seen in one patient a vascular necrosis of the femoral head in another patient the overall clinical and radiological outcome was excellent when compared to previously published studies in the literature